Welcome to MEB. This is episode 20, Reactive Process Specifications. Recall that a process specification is a clue given by the problem statement that you can convert into an equation that you can use to help you solve the problem. This episode will cover some common process specifications that are specific to reactive processes. Limiting and percent excess reactant. In order to derive the process specification equation based on a percent excess reactant, you must know which reactant is limiting and which are excess. To review this concept from chemistry, the limiting reactant is the one that would run out first if the reaction were to continue to completion. This, in turn, requires that you know the reaction stoichiometry. For example, suppose we feed 150 moles per second of reactant A and 100 moles per second of reactant B but the reaction stoichiometry is 2A plus B goes to C. Even though more A is fed than B, A is consumed at twice the rate of B. In order to fully react 100 mole per second of B, we would need 200 moles per second of A. Since we need more A than we have, reactant A is limiting in this case. The percent excess reactant is exactly what it sounds like. The actual feed flow rate of the excess reactant minus how much reactant would be needed to completely consume the limiting reactant, normalized by how much would be needed. In this example, 75 moles per second of B is required to consume 150 moles per second of A due to the 2 to 1 stoichiometric ratio. Plugging in numbers, 100 moles per second of B fed minus 75 moles per second B needed divided by 75 moles per second B needed equals 33% excess B. If the problem statement specifies that the reactants are fed in a stoichiometric ratio, this means that neither reactant is limiting. Or, in other words, there is 0% excess of all reactants. Conversion. The conversion of a reactant is defined as the moles reacted divided by the moles fed. Conversion must be between 0 and 100%, and if the conversion is 100%, then moles reacted is equal to the moles fed, meaning all the reactant reacts. By rearranging the general balance equation, we can say that moles consumed, i.e. reacted, equals moles in minus moles out, because generation is 0 for a reactant. Note that conversion is typically defined for the limiting reactant, but doesn't necessarily have to be. This is because it is impossible for the conversion of the excess reactant to reach 100%, because the limiting reactant would have ran out first before this happened. In processes with a recycle, we must make a distinction between single pass versus overall conversion. Single pass conversion refers to the reactant directly into or out of the reactor. Overall conversion compares the reactant into or out of the process. Here's a question for you to test your intuition. Which conversion must be greater, the single pass or the overall? Multiple reactions. In a perfect world, only the intended reaction that produces the desired product would happen in a chemical reactor. Sadly though, this is rarely the case. Side reactions happen, whether we want them to or not. They are problematic for two reasons. First, reagents consumed by side reactions cannot generate the desired product, and therefore the output is less. Second, side reactions produce undesired products, which complicate the separation processes that commonly follow reactors and make them more costly. Sometimes the problem statement will explicitly state which reactions are desired and which are undesired, but other times you might need to use context clues to deduce. Note that excess reactants are typically specified based on the stoichiometry of the desired reaction only. If multiple reactions are desired, then the amount of reactant needed in each of the desired reactions should be added. Selectivity and yield. The specifications of selectivity and yield describe the relative prevalence of the desired and undesired reactions. Selectivity is defined for a pair of products. It is simply the moles of desired product formed divided by the moles of undesired product formed. Note that the value for selectivity defined this way can and should be greater than 1. If it were less than 1, it would mean that we are making more undesired product than desired, and our process is probably very inefficient. Yield is a specification that may have different definitions depending on the context. 
In my class, unless otherwise stated, you should interpret the yield to be the moles of desired product that actually form, divided by the theoretical maximum moles of desired product that could form. To work out the value of the denominator, imagine that there were no side reactions and the conversion of the limiting reactant was 100%. Episode 20 Learning Objectives. Now that this episode is over, you should be able to 1. Determine which reactant is limiting, given reaction stoichiometry and feed flow rates of reactant. 2. Explain the difference between overall and single pass conversion. 3. Derive equations based on specifications for percent excess reactant, conversion, selectivity, or yield. That'll conclude this episode. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.